What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the vlog. We're finally on a new project and we're super excited to show you what we're building here. Check out the rendering. In this video series, we're gonna show you the start to finish of this entire thing. And we're gonna start with our helical piles as footings and our deck framing. So make sure you hit subscribe, stay tuned. First thing that we're figuring out here is all of our ledger heights. We have helical piles getting installed tomorrow. So we have all of our lumber here. We're gonna get ledger boards attached so we can figure out all of our elevations. So as the helical piles go in, we can just start framing. Top of our ledger. Top of our ledger? Uh, okay. All right, I changed my mind. We're gonna do six inches. Six inches? Yeah. Okay. We got, yeah, the decking. Yeah. Okay. Six inches? Six inches. Cool. Party. All right, so we got this one figured out. We're gonna come out onto a small landing here, then down onto the deck surface. Then at the edge of the house here, we'll step down one more time onto our main kitchen deck. And then we need to make sure that those elevations make sense as we go back in to the screen porch. So we'll have two elevation changes here and over there. And it's all gotta make sense, even up. Be the same. Yeah, twin. All right, so we got rained out yesterday, short day, and now uh, Goliath Tech is here ready to install our pile. So we're gonna do a quick mark out for them. We're gonna work from this side back that way. That way, as soon as they get these two installed, we can kind of start framing here and work behind them and stay as efficient as possible. So I've got the plans right here on my phone so I can check. We're about two feet off. Okay, and this one's gonna be pretty close to the edge. First one. First two footings right there. Now let's go to the lower deck. We'll check out what footings we need there. So we've got our mark 10 feet off of the house, off of this bump out, but our deck extends beyond that. So the easiest way, get those two measurements, run a string line, I'll spray this straight line. Then we can measure in between that and figure out where the footings go on this line. Beautiful. Next row of footings, 19 and a half off of the house. Is that you holding? Yeah, I'm holding. Okay. Let's see how far we have in between these. 24 and a half. Okay, 24 and a half. How many footings do we have in each row? Four footings, so three spaces. We'll divide that by three, 24 and a half. 5 divided by 3, 8.16 feet times 12, 98 inches. Okay, 98 times 2, 196. Okay. Three oh seven and three quarters is our next one. It was bigger than this. I have to get the other tape. Okay. This is where the roof is gonna be. So these are gonna be the most critical. We have a couple posts that need to be right in the corner. So that's what I wanna be careful about and make sure that we take our time, lay this out right. With the deck, a lot of times it's pretty easy because the beam is gonna cantilever past our footings and our joists are gonna cantilever past our beams. So we just need to be right in the ballpark, but we can be off by half inch, an inch, not a big deal. Here, we need to be dead on. Go in just a hair. A little less. There you go. Good. Yeah. I think that's all of them right there. 22 in all, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Plus twelve. That's twenty-three. That's twenty-one. 
23? 23 footings. One of our biggest things here is the transition into what is gonna be a new door. So uh, we were talking about taking a measurement off of that door using a laser coming over here, but then we're just assuming that this house, the foundation, everything is totally level, which I don't know, hopefully it is. Hopefully it's pretty close, but you never know. So uh, what Ant's gonna do is actually just cut out a piece of the sheathing, then he can see the framing and we can see where that finished floor is. And this one, we wanna walk directly out from the house onto our deck so we don't want to be off by like an inch uh we don't want an inch too low we definitely don't want an inch too high because then we're kind of screwed so uh this is a really good way to do it we can just cut out that sheathing and we can see what's going on diagnose and proceed With cutting the sheathing out, I'm able to expose the sill plate, the, jo the floor joist of this little addition, and then I can see the three quarter inch plywood, which is their subfloor, and their bottom plate of their walls. So with that being said, doors are always installed to the subfloor, so I can just measure off that mark and get where I need to put this uh, deck at. One of the coolest things about helical piles is that they're driven to a certain torque. So right here, right by the foundation of the house, we've got one that needs an extension on it because they didn't reach that torque. We're in the overdig zone of the foundation, so the soil's a little bit soft. We're gonna have to go a little bit deeper, hit that virgin soil to get the torque that we need. John, what's the torque that we need on this one? Uh, we're looking for somewhere around five to 600 PSI. So we're around 350 right now because it's so tall. And we can know that with concrete footings, you're not gonna know. You're just gonna dig your footing, you're gonna put it there, you're gonna hope everything's good. The deck's gonna settle. This, we know for a fact that it's driven to a specified torque and we can make sure that it's not gonna go nowhere. That's what we want. piles are now installed. Uh, Glytech did a great job with these 23 piles and we're ready to continue framing here. The guys were working behind them as we went and now uh, me and Catherine are ready to start framing beams on this larger deck. So uh, you ready to go? I'm ready. Let's go. Woo! Let's go. All right. <laughs> She's got her bags on. You got yeah. your whiz roller? <laughs> Sure do. Signature. <laughs> All right, let's go. First thing that we're gonna do is uh, figure out our beam height. So over here, uh, the deck's gonna be a little bit higher. We need to have six buys underneath of our beams where over here, uh, the beams are just sitting directly on those saddles. So we'll show you how we figure that out. You look like a very true and real carpenter today with your flannel and your vest. I know, right? Anthony said people don't wear flannels anymore. Is that true? Carpenters are everybody. Everybody, I guess. No, oh, I, I think they're still... Right? That's what I thought. Like people them. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Otherwise, I'm going to have to completely reinvent my wardrobe. <laughs> it's like everything I own. All right, so we are coming right to the inside of this corner post with our finished fascia. So I have 86 and 3 quarters. I'm going to minus 7 eighths off of that for our fascia. That puts us at 85 and 7 eighths. And then we also like to nail our last joist to the side of the ledger so it's a little bit more secure. So that leaves us at 84 and 3 eighths. Gather? 84 and 3 eighths. 84 and 3 eighths. They're using the laser over there, and uh, our next step is to get this ledger board up uh, so that we can get laser measurement off of it, and then we can figure out our six by height. So uh, we're just gonna get these beams nailed together. They're all 20s, so uh, we've crowned them all in this direction, 
and since this is a triple and it's going to be pretty dang heavy we're just going to nail two of them together then we can get it up on our posts and uh, then we can laminate the third one once it's up there So this is an easy way to do it. She's checking to make sure that uh, the top is nice and flush. And since I'm all the way at the end here, I can maneuver this and make it good. Uh, you know what kind of sucks? What? Now that we're gonna be doing so much of the work, there's not gonna be that much blooper content, you know? Uh, we're not creating any blooper Not at all, because we're the A team. B team. Just kidding, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. <laughs> Shh. It's All right, so what we want to do, we want to get our ledger on the other side of this fireplace. Are you gonna buzz around? I'm gonna buzz around with the beepy thing, sticking the beepy thing. Right now we're just setting our reference point. There we go. You can see how sensitive this is. That's close enough right there. There you go. All right, so it looks like we're at 10 and a half inches is uh, where we're at with the story poles. All we need to do is just set this up. There you go. So. That's our reference point, and what we'll do is we'll just put some screws in this ledger board, and then we'll sit it right on top of the ledger, make sure that we're still hitting that nice, solid, beepy noise. We don't want no beepy noise, we want a, a beep noise. All right, come down a little bit. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. A little bit up. A little bit up. There you go. There you go. Perfect. What we like to do is set this temporarily with some screws and then we can do our joist layout on there. Then we can stagger our actual ledger attachment uh, in between those joists so it's nice and clean. Now we need to figure out all of these helical piles see if we need to uh, do some six buys underneath of it, uh, just figure out all of our heights and make sure that our beams are exactly where they need to be. So what we've got is essentially uh, nine and three eighths for our two by 10 here. So we have it zeroed off of the top of our ledger board. So we are going to be going down nine and three eighths for our joists and then another nine and three eighths for our beams. And that's the height that we need for our footing. So. What I'm gonna do, probably don't need a calculator, is nine and three eighths plus nine and three eighths. What I like to do is nine plus nine is 18. Mm -hmm. Three eighths plus three eighths is six eighths, which is three quarter. Right. Okay, uh, what I like to do though is make it a tiny bit lower so that if necessary, we can shim up our beam, you know, an eighth of an inch or so. Okay, so we need to come up about that much so a couple ways you can do this. We can adjust the laser and zero it out at each footing, then do the math. I think it's a little bit easier if we just hold this up till it's beeping. And then uh, we'll have somebody else hold a tape measure here and then we can get our measurements. So uh, you wanna put that down for a second? Yep. Six and a quarter. Okay. Tell them. Sorry. We were recording that. <laughs> Got all of our measurements here. Catherine's gonna be cutting these. Out of our six buys. Yep. It's such a pain to have to cut six buys with a circular saw because you gotta flip it around and everything. No, it's such a pain. If only there were a better way to do it. Is there? What did I say about revving it in the air? It's too dangerous. Stop. Sorry. <laughs>
You don't want to say anything? Like, that's how you do it. That's so cool. How you do it. So cool. Nice. Boom. Everybody else is uh, moving along over there, working towards us. And uh, looking good. She's coming together. That is a big one. Phew! All right. Catherine, did you get these all cut to the right size? I hope so. Well, we're gonna find out. But uh, now we have our beams built, two plies of them at least. We have our six by sitting in here and uh, that should give us the right elevation that we need. So let's uh, see what we get. You need a hand? I'm gonna need some help with this. <laughs> it's a heavy one. All right, we have uh, all of our beams up here now. Let me show you the connection that we do from the post to the beam. Make sure it's all locked in for justice. So you can see right here, this is what our architect draws up for the connection between post to our beam. We have our six by six. We have that lagged into our helical pile. You can see this pile is also through bolted for uplift protection. And then we have more lag screws into our post, into the scab, and then four screws into our beam. So this is a mechanical connection between post and beam. We really like it because uh, it just gives it a lot of lateral stability, a lot more than some of those flimsy little connectors that you might get. When we're doing this with a two by six, we put this on a bit of a bevel so that any water that gets on here is gonna run right off and not sit. But uh, good way of doing it, keeps it locked in for justice. What's up, Catherine? Nothing, what you got going on? We are gonna string these joists because they're so long, like a 20 foot long joist. So normally, yeah, you can take your measurement in between your blocks, cut all your mid-span blocking, call it a day, but sometimes you'll, you'll throw them out. So Tom and I, are finding the center of each joist at each end, running the string line. I'm going in the middle, setting it, and that's it. Now we know they're all gonna be running nice and straight. So what do you wanna know what we got going on right now? Yeah, what do we got going on? <laughs> so we're on our third deck on this project. Um, this one's elevated higher than all of them. This is gonna be our roof structure. So we have all these beams and we're also throwing triple joists on both ends, running railroads. Um, they're gonna be our point loads for our six buys for our roof. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna get these triples ran. And this is where you try to be square, you try to be perfect, but I'm more worried about both of these triples the numbers running the same in parallel. So the project could be a little bit out of a square, but you'll never know. But for my roof, it lets me know my rafters will be all the same to where if you pinch it in, pinch it out, throw off your ridge a little bit. So right now I'm taking the time to get these triple joists ran, nice and parallel. And I think what you mean, uh, you know, if it's out of square, say a quarter inch or even a half inch on this whole thing, you're not gonna notice know. that. No. But if you have these two essentially beams, we have triple joists on both ends. If they're not completely parallel, then it's really gonna mess with our rafters because each one's gonna be a little bit different cut. And, uh, and if like, let's just say they're pinching in. If your two beams are pinching in from the house to the backyard, when you get to the backyard, those rafters, it's gonna make the ridge higher because you're pinching in the beams, which is pushing the triangle up. So you wanna make sure they're running parallel so they can all be the, be the same size and plumb level square that's like the rule of thumb it's a nice uh half coat you got yeah to get that uh two sleeves off <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's a couple of vest boys this guy's my best friend <laughs> we're just trying to do our vest over here <laughs> blocking going in mid-span mid -span. i've seen some people do uh they only do their blocking above their beam i've seen that and I, I like that i i mean I think that, to me, that helps with keeping your joists plumb and square, so like they're not kicking out left yeah. and right a little bit. Um, but I don't understand it with what mid-splam blocking does. 
So either do both or just do mid span. Yeah. That's what our architect specs. The mid span blocking. That's gonna keep everything really locked in. You can see it going in over there, so that in between your beam connections, you might have a 10 foot span. You're not gonna have them wanting to kind of wiggle around. Otherwise, the decking is the only thing holding all those spans together. Tension. You wanna get rid of that lateral sway. You don't wanna be on a deck and feel like you're on a boat. No, you'll get sick. You'll get seasick. Our decks are flat. Yeah. Flat as the earth. Choo. What kind of people are you? Are you round earth people or flat earth people? Tell me. Well. <laughs> All right, so we're framing this larger section of deck where the screen porch is going to be, and we have this fireplace kick out. And what we had to do, because we can't have anything load bearing on this fireplace wall, what we've done is run a triple joist out to our first beam on both sides of it. That's connected here with a triple hanger. And then we did the same thing right here. We have a triple hanger on this carrying across. So essentially this is like a flush beam and now we're gonna have hangers here going out. So that way nothing is structurally attached to the house and we're good to go. And because this deck here is longer than 20 feet, we are splitting at this first beam and then we'll be running out this way. So we have 12s and then 16s and we'll have all this framed out. Can I get the drone up? Let me get the drone. Well, that's where we're gonna leave this off on this video. We've got a little bit more framing to go, so we'll finish that up. And in the next video, we're gonna show you how we get started on this whole roof structure. We'll also cover some of the framing details, nailers, stairs, all of that kind of stuff. So make sure you hit subscribe, stay tuned. And until next time, this is Premier Outdoor.